Running off like that, putting yourself at risk? It's pretty goddamn stupid. What do you want from me? Quit worrying about me, okay? Stop lecturing me, please. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. Then stop pretending to be. Gamers, rise up. You, put down that gun, son. We won't be needing it here. And you, leave that rifle behind. In fact, I'd say it's time to hang it up on the old wall. Boy, you stop that crying right now, you hear me? We're gonna get through this, okay? Don't be scared. Hello, friends. My name is Dante, and today, I tried a challenge that would break any man's soul. In the face of danger, I'm gonna hang my weapon up on the wall, bend over, and take everything the bad guys throw at me just to see how far I can go without breaking. We're gonna cast our Skyrim Muffle spell, creep up behind all enemies, and say, this is my swamp. So, how many enemies can you avoid killing in The Last of Us? Come along on this adventure with me, my children, and we'll find out together. So really quick, let's throw out a few rules here. You know, the rules I followed along the way. Because surprisingly, there's a lot of different ways to play a pacifist run in The Last of Us. You may have a few different questions like, do cutscenes count? Are you allowed to damage enemies as long as you don't kill them? Can your allies kill enemies for you? And if so, does that count towards your kill count? I'll answer all of these sweet honeysuckle junior soon. So get out your snacks, pull out your Bibles, and let's get down and dirty into this. Now, the king of this run, the thing I always looked to in my time of need, was the stats page in the menu. Here, it tells you how many kills you have, deaths, time played, blah blah blah, you get the point. My main concern here is the kill count. No matter what happens in cutscenes, no matter what happens in the gameplay, I'll always be referring to this kill counter. That being said, rule number one is no matter what, the kill counter is king. I'm trying to get the lowest kill count by any means necessary. I want that number to be the absolute lowest it can be. So then, this brings me into rule number two. Allies can help me out whenever they can. This made the run so much longer than it needed to be because allies take forever just to kill a single enemy, but the fact is, my allies can kill enemies for me without it counting towards the kill counter, so allies can definitely help out at all times. Rule number three. I'm allowed to use glitches as long as I never use mods or cheats. As with every challenge, I allow glitches since literally anybody watching can do them and glitches are a part of the game. But I am totally against any sort of cheating or mods. Cool. Now that the rules are established, I just have to mention that I'll be keeping a kill counter at the bottom of the screen here, just for you guys. So of course, the zombie apocalypse is just starting, and Joel and Tommy decide the best course of action is to drive into a massively populated town to escape. Then, right when we were about to take the detour through the fence, this random guy must have been more terrified than we were, because he just ran straight through the fence. What? Oh my god, I didn't think superheroes existed in this world. This is the man that's gonna save the world. Okay, maybe not. Then, I arrived in present day, and Tess and I were off to look for Robert. The authorities' vehicle blew up, I watched a man sleep. Aw, oh, look at that! How precious. And finally, Tess and I made it to the man trapped under the rubble. Now, every playthrough of The Last of Us I've done, I've had to leave this poor man behind even though he's begging for me to put a bullet in his head. Okay man, enough is enough. You've been through too much pain and suffering, and it ends here. I just can't do it man, I can't do it. This challenge is more important. But, I promise you, in my next playthrough, I'll splatter those brains all over the walls, rip the clothes from your body, and store you under my floorboards. I swear to you. It was now time to face off against the first enemies in the game. Apparently, I could have just stealthed by these boys, but since I didn't know that, I immediately ran for my life leaving Tess behind to deal with the mess. I sat there and watched as all the runners ganged up on her and attacked her, but she eventually destroyed them all. The human enemies weren't too bad, I just sat behind cover and watched Tess get every bone in her face shattered. Of course though, it was worth it because her kills don't count towards my kill count. This was repeated over and over again until we found the man responsible for Uncle Ben's death. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. That is a stupid idea. Then I met Ellie, gave her a really good first impression, and proceeded to have my way with the dead body. And this is where I came to my first glitch. Now normally, I'd go into this building with Tess and Ellie, fight some infected, and ultimately, have to kill a handful of runners and clickers by myself because Tess is unable to help at that point. Like I said though, I want to avoid as many kills as possible, including these ones. 
and luckily for me, there's a glitch right before this part that skips the whole building. Basically, you climb up onto this little ledge here, fall into the building, and do a whole series of little maneuvers until you finally drop into the final clicker room with zero enemy spawn. It took me a few tries to get this glitch to work, but oh baby, it finally worked and I was pumped. And guess what? When I checked the stats page, my kill count was still at zero! Hell yeah! We freaking did it, boys! By the way, all of the glitches I used throughout this run I found from another YouTuber named Anthony Caliber. He does lots of The Last of Us videos and primarily does speedruns, so if you guys are interested in that, go check him out. I'll link his glitch video in the description below, so go over there and comment, Dante Ravioli sent me here. Thank you, Anthony. Very cool. Now then, this whole museum area is easily slipped by. The dumpster can be pushed without killing all of the runners, the runner at the door can just be yeeted by, and Tess and Ellie can be abandoned so that I can place the board without defeating a single runner. And I arrived at the part where Tess goes bye-bye. Maybe if I hadn't have totally ditched them in the museum, she'd still be alive. Ellie and I ran for our frigging lives. I pushed her over the edge as a little prank, and somehow, she was able to slip by all of the bad guys unseen. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Hurry, Ellie, before they see you! Whew. That was a close one. They almost spotted you. So we escaped the armed soldiers and made our way to Bill's Town. Still with zero kills under my belt. If you guys are enjoying this cinematic experience, click the like button below as that really helps my channel grow and it means a lot to me to see your guys' support. All right, all right, all right. It's Billy Boy's time to tussle. We started off in the beautiful wilderness and I was so excited to finally burn. Now, I know what you little smarties are thinking. Dante, Bill's trap, bruh. What are you gonna do about the trap, man? Don't forget about the trap, bruh! Yes, I know, okay? You don't think I planned for that? Before we even talk about the frigging trap, can we please talk about George the Friendly Clicker? Is that an option? So again, thanks to Anthony Caliber, he showed a glitch in his video where if you throw a brick or bottle at the tripwire and quickly run forward to activate the clicker, the tripwire will blow up without killing it, and he becomes George the Friendly Clicker. I asked Ellie to keep him as a pet, she said no, and ultimately, we had to put him down. You'll forever be missed, George. Guys, it's secret mission time. Pull out your sneaky kicks, get out your radar gun, and let's sneak by these two clickers like the super spies we are. Come here. Shh! Ellie, shut up! You're gonna get us caught, you tard! Alright, so on to the next glitch then. Long story short, this glitch took me so many tries, I was probably at it for two hours, but successfully doing it lets me skip Bill's trap. I know, I was so happy to find out there was actually a glitch for this part of the game because trust me, not all games have perfect glitches like this. Anywho, it's a long process and I'm not going to explain it all, but basically you set down your frame rate, do a specific set of moves, and you'll find that the door to Bill's trap is gone. This allows you to yeet yourself past the trap, come back, watch the shadows change like you're in a horror movie, turn back around and make it to the final door where a cutscene plays. And of course, I immediately checked my kill count, and there I was, past Bill's trap with zero kills to my name. Yeah! I'm the most epic gamer in the universe. Bill is my new best friend by the way, with his razor sharp machete and his big strong shotgun, I knew I was in good hands. Damn son! Bill, you're such a mad lad. Now, I tried my hardest to stay as quiet as I could, but Bill didn't seem to care and just stomped his big boy feet all over the playground. Fucking face. All we really did was sneak by all of the infected. I got Bill to absolutely pummel them at the bus station. Well, that was easier than I thought it'd be and we made it to the school. It was tough maneuvering through the narrow hallways, but eventually Bill was able to dispatch all of the enemies and we arrived at the bloater. I've read online in a few places that Bill can kill the bloater. Some people said it took a while to happen, others said Joel has to be the one to do the killing blow, and after all of my research, I think I found the correct answer. Bill can 100% kill the bloater here. Thanks to a video I caught by Scary Ice literally while editing this, which is why I didn't do it myself where Bill backstabs the bloater with his machete. I'm assuming this is the only time this can happen, meaning Bill's shotgun and David's revolver can't kill the bloater. I played this part for at least an hour. Bill had killed both runners, and I had burned the bloater to a crisp so that he couldn't throw any spores at me. Bill had dang near perfect aim and he could visibly see blood coming out of the big boy. But after a while, even at point blank range, Bill was missing every single shot. 
He just completely refused to hit the thing. Look, long story short, I don't think AI companions can kill bloaters in this game with guns. If you guys have any video proving different, please show it to me. But all I was able to find was Bill stabbing the bloater in the back by YouTuber Scary Ice. So I had to break my spine trying to lift Bill up onto the platform, and lucky me, three runners came dashing out of the hole in the wall. And guess what? Bill decided not to help this time. Bill, can you do anything, you useless piece of- Since Bill decided to be selfish here, I had to kill these three runners myself, racking our kill count up to four. Intermission, intermission. I'm sick, so my voice may sound a little weird, but I actually found out while editing this that you can get by this part with zero kills. Scary Ice and I had a little back and forth conversation and he told me that not only can Bill kill the bloater, but Bill can kill the three runners in the gym if he died of them once. Which, obviously I didn't do since I'm so goddamn good at this game. Ugh, I'm suffering from success. So yes, passing Bill's part can be done with zero kills, so I'll leave it at zero below. The next part wasn't too bad, especially being out in such an open space. Every time a wave of enemies would appear, I'd distract about half of them until Bill killed a few, push the truck a bit, and rinse and repeat until we were out of there. Here's the main reason why I said that the in-game's kill count is something I wanted to stick to instead of counting myself. When I crash with Ellie here, push this man's neck into the broken glass and break this man's face over the corner of the counter, these two guys, for some reason, don't count as kills. And there's two important things to note here. One, let's say I kill a guy and end up dying myself or restarting the checkpoint. When I come back, that kill is still counted. So anytime I failed a section after killing someone, I'd have to quit to the main menu and come back into the game, which was very annoying. And another thing to note here is that I can actually grab an enemy, shoot at other enemies, and then they'll start shooting at me, killing their friend in the process, which doesn't count as a kill on my part. So I could have actually helped Tess out in the beginning. Ooh, sorry Tess. Originally during this part, I thought I was gonna have to kill every man here since Ellie can't help me yet. But luckily, I realized I only needed to kill one. See, if I got every man to kill each other in some long lineup, eventually there'd only be one guy left that I had to kill myself. This is the logic I used and it's what I did. But, looking a little deeper into some more glitches, I found out from MatMat10111 that if you crouch at the metal doorway and aim a bottle, for some reason all of the enemies despawn or something. His video will be linked down below if you want to try it yourself, but it allows me to get through this part with zero kills. Then, we come to the most difficult yet most useful glitch in the entire game, the hotel skip. Basically, you use the pallet to glitch into the hotel wall, swim out of bounds for a bit, and do some specific moves to make it to a part past the hotel. All you need to know is, I was at this for hours. This glitch is so specific and the movements you make as Joel need to be so precise, but eventually I made it. Here's something that hit close to my heart. I was scared of all the bad guys around us and I didn't know what to do. So I decided to use the last useful glitch in the game to despawn all of these big bad enemies. But it comes at a cost. Ellie! <laughs> oh, there you are. Now, we meet our new best friends, Henry and Sam. Of course, my whole trio of friends were being absolute badasses, so I had nothing to worry about. Fighting the horde of men at night seemed a little daunting, and I had the brilliant idea of hiding behind Sam and Ellie for protection. Somehow, it didn't work. So for once, I decided to man up, and instead of hoping that Henry would do all of the work, I helped him out. Step back, I'll blow his freaking head off, you hear me? Damn it! Get the freak off me, man! Stay back, I'll blow his freaking head off! From here on out, just realize that Ellie is my little killing machine now, and was my last resort to any situation. And finally, I arrived in the sewers with the whole gang being brought together. You keep him safe! Yeah, Henry, I promise your boy is in safe hands! <laughs> Luckily, Sam and I can just run past all of the stalkers and clickers, which brings us to the room Henry and I need to hold down while Ellie and Sam open the door for us. This room is timed, which is great news. I stood on a table and watched as Henry had an epic battle with the infected, and after a little bit, the two kids got the door open. Coming up from the basement of a random house, I witnessed Sam and Ellie on a couch, flirting with each other. I threatened Sam by telling him I'd break his little legs if he even came close to touching my little Ellie. But the little prick ignored me, shoved me, and walked away. So a little bit more of an aggressive method was necessary here. Anyways, this brings me to the largest kill count in the game, the sniper part. Hey, be careful. There's no glitches to avoid this that I know about, and the gang can't help me too much here. 
You see, this part isn't really timed and there's not much to be done, except for the fact that I found out you can place nail bombs around the map. If the enemies step on these nail bombs, they'll die instantly and their deaths go towards the kill count. And the gang can help you by killing guys, but it's very unlikely since each enemy on easy mode takes four shots to kill. But I found out that if I shot the nail bombs before the enemies got too close to them and I damaged them, they'd take less shots to kill, essentially making it easier for my friends to kill them without the kills counting towards my score. You can have a maximum of six nail bombs placed around the map, meaning at the least, you guys should be able to figure out at least six kills we can save here, maybe even more. And right before the tank thing arrives, there's three enemies left that only stop spawning once the gang kills one of them. Not to mention the tank guy counts as a kill, and the infected you shoot at the end. Oh, not to mention, remember how the two guys you kill at the crashed truck don't count as kills? Well guess what? The sniper who you stab with a shiv counts as a kill. This game is wacky in that way. Sometimes forced kills count, and other times they don't. It was really annoying. Personally, I was able to only kill 15 guys here when the usual number is 18. I'm positive you guys can get this number lower, so please, if you have proof or a strategy that consistently gets less kills during the sniper part, let me know in the comments below or message me over Instagram at DanteRaviolyYT. By the way, I upload new clips over on Instagram every day, so follow me over there. Tommy's part is pretty easy. When the men attacked the camp, I freaking booked it. Ran past the map, went back for the map, reached the door, took many hostages, DON'T TOUCH ME! and watched as the final man succumbed to his inevitable death. Ellie freaking shot me? But of course, I immediately forgave her. Oh, I can't stay mad at that cute face. I also can't feel my rib cage at the moment. Being able to take a man hostage who has already taken Tommy as a hostage is the best mechanic in this friggin' game. It's the ultimate Uno reverse. And can we just talk about how disgusting it was to be holding a hostage and to have him explode in your arms from another man's shotgun blast? Give me the code! What's the friggin' code? Oh, gross! Tommy and I cleared out the rest of the house. I got Ellie to shoot the runners through the gate. I snuck by the infected in the dorm room. And here we made it to yet another unavoidable kill. Well... Before we get to that, I have something terrifying to tell you guys. I entered the university the same way I always do, but this time, I heard some rustling straight ahead. Oh my god, guys, it's a T-posing monkey! Yo, you alright, dog? Rad. Well, I'ma just head out. Great to see ya. So I fall onto the rebar, I tell Ellie to move, but luckily, with my big brain, I laid the nail bomb on the ground, which my guy stepped on. Unfortunately, Ellie didn't shoot her guy, but conveniently, he had a fatal heart attack just before he could reach us. That's pretty lucky. Here's another part where we're forced to kill a guy, but no matter what, he doesn't count as a kill. Even if you shoot him. I played this part over again, ramboed my way through the upper floor because I'm just that good, shot him with the revolver just to double check, and he didn't count. What the heck, man? So glass through neck doesn't count, prison shanking a guy counts, and blowing a guy's brains out doesn't count. Logic. Joel doesn't feel so good. Ellie hunts one big meaty boy, and it's time to David. Listen, this room was tough, boys. Even tougher than that dry chicken your mom just threw in the oven without marinating or breading, and you were expected to eat it even though it was dry as heck, and to this day, you still can't stomach even a little bit of chicken because bad memories pop up every time you even think about it. But yeah, this infected room was tough. Now, I did get through it after many attempts, many jukes, and many yeets. Honestly, this was the toughest part of the run for me. David can kill the clicker in the next room fairly easily, and I arrived at the bloater part. David can of course kill the small enemies while I run around and distract them, but the bloater is only killable by Ellie. Again, if you have proof against this, please let me know, so add another kill to that big boy. The whole winter section is pretty straightforward. I literally just ran and snuck by everyone. Ellie does have to kill one of the two guys in the room where David chokes her out, because for some reason, no matter how hard I tried or how stealthy I was, there was some line that once crossed, the two guys instantly knew where I was and I wasn't able to open the door. Try this part for yourselves and see what I mean. Yet, killing one of the guys makes this part like any other throughout the game and allowed me to slip through the door. Second intermission, intermission part two. So you can actually get by this part as well with zero kills. I'm not entirely sure how, but Scary Ice did tell me sort of how to do it. I'm still confused on the whole thing, but yeah, just thought I'd bring that up. I'm sure you guys can figure it out, it just wouldn't work for me no matter how hard I tried. I was at it for an hour. Anyway, here's another thing that doesn't make sense. So I'm riding my horse like normal, stab a guy in the throat with my switchblade, and kick a poor man off of my horse. 
and upon looking at my stats screen, I realized I acquired a kill. You're probably thinking, hey Dante, that guy you stabbed in the throat counted as a kill, right? Wrong. Kicking a guy gently off of your horse counts as a kill. You might be thinking I'm joking, but I'm not. I played through the whole fight with David before I noticed some random extra kill on my stat screen and finally realized after some testing, it happens when you kick a bad guy off of your horse. Absolutely ridiculous. When you gently kick him off of your slowed down horse, does his spine shatter into hundreds of tiny little pieces upon hitting the ground? Because that's the only explanation that makes sense to me. I redesigned David's face, hit a fat dab when I realized he didn't count as a kill, and it was now time to get to the finale of the game. Ellie and I snuck by the infected in the tunnel, she pushed the crate over the edge, and I sent my regards. Stay back! You'll never take me alive! And here was Esteban the Friendly Clicker. If you shoot this clicker and quickly press triangle for Ellie to climb the gap, she can get into the room without us having to kill the clicker. Again, thanks to Anthony Caliber for finding this. Esteban was pretty rad. He did trap me in a very small room and gave me a little scare, because do note, he is still very dangerous if I get too close. But ultimately, I was fine. And yes, it's Firefly Hospital time, baby. I used my signature diagonal run to confuse and distract my enemies as I made my daring escape. It actually worked surprisingly well. I ran some more, blew up a fire extinguisher on a guy's face, and made it to the surgery room. I tried to scare the doctor into letting me pass, but he was fearless. You shall not pass! I really didn't want to kill the guy, so I met him halfway and shot him in the foot. Hey, you fucking animal! I mean, I shot him in the foot. That couldn't have killed him, right? But I don't know, it looked like he dropped dead instantly. Eh, he's fine. And best of all, the doctor didn't count as a kill. Again, why? Because it was a footsie shot? I'll never know. Of course, I had to terrify the other doctors by doing target practice, but ultimately, I let them live because I'm a good guy. Then Marlene tried to get me to give Ellie back to her like I was some kind of Indian giver or something. How long before she's torn to pieces by a pack of clickers? That is if she hasn't been raped and murdered first. I missed the part where that's my problem. It's what she want, and you know it. No, not exactly. <laughs> Wait! Let me go! Gonna cry? Well boys and girls, we finally made it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please comment and tell me down below what your favorite part was. Especially if you've never commented before. I reply to everyone and want to see new people comment. So, how many enemies can you avoid killing in The Last of Us? Well, a lot, considering you kill hundreds of enemies throughout the game. My final kill count was 22. Okay, so sorry if this whole thing was confusing, but my final 22 kill count is really lowered to 17 kills when I remove the bloater in the gym, the three runners, and one of the guys in Ellie's portion, which as we discussed are all 100% avoidable. So the lowest kill count in The Last of Us as of right now, glitches included, is 17 kills. But. If we don't count the sniper portion, I only had to kill two enemies throughout the entire game. The sniper with the shiv, even though that kind of counts as the sniper part, and the bloater is Ellie. That's it. Isn't that freaking insane? If you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe to me because I make 1-2 to two new gaming challenge videos every week. Make sure to click the bell icon or else you pretty well aren't subscribed to me. Just make sure you click that bell. And like I said, I want you guys to figure out better strategies for the sniper portion because I just don't have the time to spend hours on it. But I'm sure you little smarties can figure it out and lessen the kill count by a few more. Thanks for watching, check out my other gaming challenge videos on my channel, and I'll see you thick boys in my next video.